Welcome once again to our continuing YouTube Business Law video series. My name is Christopher Newfeld of Newfeld Legal. And in this particular video series, we're discussing shareholders agreements and in particular buyout clauses. Now, whereas the most common buyout clause that you'll hear about is a shotgun provision, there is another very common alternative to the shotgun, and that is the put call arrangement. Now, how does a put call work? Now, typically it involves two um, opposite factors. One where you effectively ask to be bought out, and the other one is where you effectively look to push somebody out. So taking, for example, somebody that you are looking to push out, you would have, you would be saying to them, I'm going to look to acquire your shares. And based on what the shareholders agreement provides, it provides that you're, there's a valuation taken as to what the value of the company is and then what the relative value of that shareholder's shares are. So if they're a 50% shareholder of the company, you would they would be allocated 50% of the share value. Similar to 25% of the shares in the company, 25% share value. But then there's an additional step. There is a premium that is paid on that. And the reason for paying a premium is that you are pushing somebody out of the company and therefore denying them the ability to determine when they want to exit and the future potential in the business. As such, the person would be afforded a premium. A premium could be 15%, could be 30%, it is whatever the shareholders have agreed to at the outset when they created the shareholders agreement. So let us say there is a premium of 20% that you just put into a um, into a call provision and the valuation of the company is at a million dollars and you have a 50 percent shareholding so what happens is they call out valuation is done million dollar company share buyout the shares that are being bought out are valued at five hundred thousand dollars premium of twenty percent that means an extra hundred thousand dollars is added onto it for a total buyout price of $600,000. Okay, that's how the call works. The put works in the opposite direction in some respects. The put is sort of operates, you're wanting to get out of the company. So the arrangement is there that you can force the company to buy out your shares. But what does it do? How does it discount the arrangement? Well, there's two important factors here. First of all, you still have the valuation aspect. So you'll value it. But then you'll have, first of all, you have a percentage discount. So typically, oftentimes, you'll find a one-for-one -one arrangement where if it's a 20% premium, you have a 20% discount. So if we look at the previous example, instead of having a $100,000 premium, you would have the $100,000 discount. So it would take it from $500,000 to $400,000. Now there's another aspect that also goes into these typically, and that is the fact that you're pushing upon the company to buy that individual out. And most companies are not designed to be liquid entities. So although they are required to buy them out, the concept that's provided for is that they do not pay the full amount at the outset. This is a protective measure for the company. So there is a percentage that typically is paid at the outset. It could be 20%, could be 25%, could be 30%. And then the balance of the amount is paid over a period of time, generally in monthly payments, with or without interest. So looking back at our previous example, we have a $500,000 valuation for the shares, a 20% discount, which brought it down to 40%, $400,000. And then the arrangement, let us say, would be for 20% to be paid at the outset, which would mean $80,000 at the outset. And let us say 
a five-year period over which the balance or the remaining $320,000 would be paid out in even monthly payments so as to lessen the burden to the company of making the payments out to that individual. Naturally, what the company can do is bring somebody else as a shareholder and try to balance it off and try to bring in the money and utilize the payment arrangement as an offset for them. But in this way, the, the benefit of the put call arrangement as opposed to shotgun arrangement, as you'll see, is that instead of having oftentimes higher valued, more financially capable shareholders being able to dictate arrangements in a shotgun, the put call arrangement is effectively designed to allow the actual valuation of the company to be a benchmark. So you actually have a benchmark of the value of the company so that it isn't the easiest thing in the world to try to get a severely discounted rate and use the buyout clause to the disadvantage of other shareholders. Naturally, the buyouts and the valuations that come in play, play a substantial role in this, but oftentimes valuation clauses have become so technical and complex that they are actually designed to protect against those uh, manipulations of one individual going to evaluate and having valuations that are disproportionate to the company's actual value. So when you're thinking about drafting or having your shareholders agreement drafted, you need to consider this as to whether a shotgun really is appropriate for your particular uh, relationship in your business arrangements. You have to look at who your fellow shareholders are and see what concerns you might have with respect to a shotgun and a shotgun being used to your disadvantage. Conversely, if a shotgun could be used to your advantage, you might well want to stay with a shotgun because you have more financial resources, more financial capabilities, or the fact of the matter is that the other shareholders simply will never be in a position to operate the business by themselves such that they will not effectuate a shotgun and you have the shotgun really as your sole tool. On the flip side, you might find the shotgun to be problematic for yourself. And if the shotgun is problematic for yourself, seriously consider a put call arrangement. Also, there are other arrangements available to yourself. They are beyond the discussion of this particular YouTube video. But as always, a corporate commercial lawyer who is familiar with shareholders agreements and the various nuances can advise you onto that like myself, we do provide paid legal consultation on all areas of shareholders agreements and shareholders disputes, planning your arrangements and, your, and the advancement of your corporate interests. We hope you have found this particular YouTube video informative. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and provide us with any comments you may have as we continue to develop this particular YouTube channel to help you and other business owners move forward in developing shareholder screens that best serve your individual purposes because as always the shareholders agreement should be about you yes it's a monarchy for your arrangements to other people but you cannot let other people dictate to you what your arrangement should be because as soon as you start doing that you're putting yourself in the biggest position of problems going in the future it might never occur but when it does occur, if you allow someone else to dictate everything that's in a shareholders agreement, you're going to find them be able to dictate how everything ends. We hope you found this again informative, and we thank you, and we look forward to seeing you again.